Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming along to our session this morning, this webinar, where we are going to be doing something slightly different to what we normally do in these webinars. Uh, Again, thank you for coming and for taking the time. We have many people on the call this morning who will have participated in other webinars that Global Reviews have given. And in those webinars, we have looked at pains and uh, results from specific industries. This webinar this morning, though, we are looking at something very different. And in this webinar, I will be introducing the theme for our upcoming Digital Leaders Summit, which is connecting the CEO and your digital customer strategy. I'd like to talk through some of the reasons why this is the theme for our up and coming Digital Leaders Summit on the 8th of November of October this year. And I would also like to share some results from some research that we have recently conducted with digital leaders in different industries around the globe. So I'll get straight into it and I'll start looking at some of the actual results. So what we're going to talk about today, some of the results I'm going to pull up on screen as an executive summary. Many companies have not adopted a digital customer strategy and less than 50% of CEOs are connected to the digital customer strategy. As digital marketers, in terms of measuring performance, what we rate as important and what we're actually measuring are two different things. All of the tools, of all of the tools that CEOs have to drive a digital customer strategy, digital marketers state that the budget is the least available. And then finally, these are challenging times for digital marketers, but there are those who are successfully embedding digital, those, but there are those who have gained the support of their CEO and implementing their digital customer strategy. And essentially the message here is that there's lots that we can learn from each other in terms of those who are doing digital customer strategy correctly or doing it well and have connected their CEO to those who are starting on that pathway in terms of trying to implement and integrate digital into their marketing department and certainly the fabric of the wider organization. Very quickly, who is Global Reviews? Well, we are an international data analytics and a customer insight company. We have been in operation since 2000, so we are 15 years old. We work in multiple different industries across many different leading brands, and we provide experience in terms of helping companies to improve how easy it is for people to buy from them, from customers to buy from them, and then also we help them to measure and improve how to make themselves more attractive in terms of their digital customer strategy so that it actually brings people to that point of buying. We are the most accurate measurement of digital effectiveness and we are running the largest syndicated programs around the world. Indeed, in the UK, we would put 50,000 in-market consumers into the homes, or in, if we put 50,000 uh, in-market consumers, we put brands in front of them and ask them to choose what brands they would like to buy from in different types of markets and the reasons why. Anyway, so that's a lot about global reviews, um, but I'll come back to the actual research itself and the results that I wanted to talk through today. So first of all, I'm going to kick off with a question that we asked in a recent survey. That survey is currently live at the moment as well. We are still collecting data and the data will be fully presented at the Digital Leaders Summit. So if you haven't completed the survey, we would encourage you to do so. One of the questions that we ask in that survey is at what stage in terms of adopting a digital customer strategy do you believe your company is currently at? So starting at the very first stage in terms of raising awareness, we can see 16% of those who completed the survey, digital leaders in companies, stated that they are currently just raising awareness. 12% said that they're educating internal stakeholders, nobody's validating, nobody's trialing, and 42% are embedding. So the key message here is that companies are on a continuum in terms of integration. Some have gone ahead, like those who are embedding at the 42%, and those there are some who are just starting out on that journey where they're just looking to raise awareness and educate internal stakeholders. So ultimately, we can learn from each other. As I mentioned earlier on, this creates an opportunity for us to share ideas and to learn from those who are doing it well. And that is at the very core, the reasons for this theme for this Digital Leaders Summit this year. And they are the type of things that we will be exploring as we will be bringing those together who have embedded it successfully within the organization with those who are just starting out on the journey and learning from each other in terms of best practice and the wins and the potential pit traps. So 
interesting that we're in a continuum and there's lots going on and there's still a lot of development in terms of the industry when we're implementing digital strategies. So if we're at that early stage in terms of implementing a digital customer strategy, how do we get it in across the organization? How do we weave it into the company fabric? Well, we know the companies are built on the basis of the concept of vision and strategy. So the vision we're trying to get somewhere in particular and we strategy is how we're going to get there. And the person who's responsible for this is the CEO. And that's why the CEO is really important in terms of this overall theme and linking the CEO to the digital customer strategy. So one of the questions that we asked in our research is, how strongly connected is your CEO with the marketing department's digital customer strategy? And we got some very interesting results. So across a five-point scale, from not at all connected to very close connected, and then those who say that they don't know, 43% are in the first two categories on the left-hand side, which is not at all connected or somewhat connected. And then we have 47% who are either connected or very closely connected. So we've just one in three who are very closely connected. So there's clearly a job to be done here in terms of bringing the CEO closer to the digital customer strategy and then leveraging their support in order to drive the digital customer strategy throughout the business and certainly the marketing department. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing the gaps. Now, what is it that the CEO could potentially be thinking about that they haven't incorporated the digital customer strategy onto their agenda? So if we can understand their mindset and how they approach things, we may give us some kind of clues into how we can connect them cl more closely to what we are doing in terms of our digital customer strategy. At a very, very broad level, we would typically look at the CEO's job in terms of the mission, the overall vision of where we're trying to get to, the objectives, what we're trying to achieve, the strategies, how we're going to get there, and the tactics that help the strategy. Now, that's at a very broad level. The CEO is thinking about lots of other different types of things as well. The CEO is a very busy person and a lot of the stuff really is around measuring risk and understanding how we're going to achieve success. And I suppose their job in many ways is identifying business needs, prioritizing them and determining solutions. And that's a very interesting concept though because the prioritization of different types of needs is done on the basis of must have, should have, could have and would have. And so if we understand that, then we understand that part of our goal is to move the digital customer agenda further up the chain in terms of priority. And that has got to be a key element of what we want to achieve. So bringing people together to discuss how this is being done and the reasons why digital is important is a key component of that because we need to learn from each other. So looking then at how we are currently prioritizing it ourselves in our own activity, in our own departments. Another question that we asked was, which of the following measures does your company use to evaluate performance? So we have website conversion rates coming out at the top, we've got return on marketing investment, we've got customer experience, and we've got customer satisfaction and feedback. So this is a proportional spread on where different people are actually placing their resources. But we then asked the question, please rank these in in order of importance for measuring the performance of the company's marketing. And so when we start looking at a rank order, we see a different picture. We see the customer experience comes out first, we see that website conversion rates comes out second, we see that return on marketing investment is coming out third, we see that average revenue per user or ARPU is coming out fourth, and then we have satisfaction in terms and customer feedback coming out fifth. So why are so many of us measuring customer satisfaction when we don't see it as being that important? There is some kind of confusion that seems to be going on here, or certainly resource allocation is not in line with ranked importance. Why? And that is key if we think about this concept of how the CEO is actually prioritizing things, how are we prioritizing things ourselves in terms of measuring different elements which will drive the digital customer strategy. Because we must prioritize our own agenda with a single message before we can test it against the CEO's rigor because they have many different things that they're looking at and ultimately these will come down to business cases and supporting a business case. Is it that the CEO potentially doesn't have the right resources or 
has the availability to get to the right resources in order to be able to drive the digital customer strategy or to be connected to it. Another question we asked is, Key tools for driving digital customer strategies have been identified below, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Which of these tools do you believe your CEO has access to in order to drive digital customer strategy in your company? 38% the right people, 75% knowledge, 50% stakeholder support, 25% budget, and 35% technology. Now, there's a couple of different interesting things going on here. The first one being 38% the right people, but yet 75% that they have the knowledge. Where is that knowledge coming from? Is that knowledge coming from external to the organization? Because if only 38% are saying that they have the right people, then there would be a concern that those people internal to the organization are not the people who have that knowledge. So there's something interesting going on there. 50% in terms of stakeholder support may also be linked to the right people. Budget of 25% I'm going to come to in a moment and then we have technology at 35% so technology at 35% again may be based on how important and the hierarchy um, of the technological department or the CTO in terms of bringing the technology into the wider business landscape and pushing the digital customer strategy. Ultimately, technology can be brought in, it can be bought, but if you don't have the right people, again, to do it, then that's going to be a huge uh, expense for something which may just sit on the shelf. So let's talk about the budget then, because that's something which we hear again and again. And we have 25% coming out and saying that the budget is the lowest part of what they actually have access to and that this may be one of the greatest barriers in terms of driving the digital customer strategy or certainly the CEO being connected to it. The question that I would like to pose though is who allocates the budget and who sets it ultimately? It's not the marketing department and it's not you. So your job is not necessarily to uh, set the budget. The job is to convince those who do set the budget that it's not about building budget, it's about creating value. And what I mean by that is that we must fight back, fight past any excuses in terms of budget, because ultimately it's not a good enough excuse. Because we know that limitations in budget will be directly correlated to the mission that we discussed earlier on in terms of the CEO. If we must have it, there will be budget for it, because the higher up it is in terms of the priority, then it will just become a form and function of the business. So this is about prioritization rather than actually budget. And what it's about is understanding that it's about creating customer value and, cre and measuring customer value rather than about setting budgets. The part of the reason for this and the legacy of this budget argument is that our most recent cost benefit analysis has been based on direct impact on sales. And this is essentially a blunt strategy due to limitations in other choices of measuring success. And what we're saying is that there are new opportunities for measurement. Techniques alongside the evolving nature of digital, which is opening up an opportunity in a more holistic manner to discern what drives sales. An example of that is big data plus other data streams as we become more holistic. Another example which we're seeing more and more of is people tying customer experience to actually return on investment and the ways in which you can do that. So there are lots of options available and new opportunities in terms of data of how we can measure things past just the bottom line and return on sales. So what we're suggesting and what we're saying is that we need to invest in customer value rather than customer sales because customer value has a much larger impact and things like recommendation, word of mouth, repeat purchase, purchase frequency, a lot of these different types of things are based on things around customer value, potentially customer experience and that we need to open up our universe in terms of understanding that in terms of being able to drive the budget conversation. So, moving on to another question that we asked in the study. In terms of digital, does your company think multi-channel? Does it think web internet first? Does it think desktop laptop first? Does it think mobile first? Or does it think omni-channel first? So let me show you the results first. We had 9% for internet. We had 11% for desktop. We have 8% for mobile first, 45% for omni-channel, and 27% for multi-channel. So what's interesting here, I'd like to discuss just for a moment, is the concept of omni-channel. Because omni-channel has become 
a buzzword and is something that people are talking more and more about. But in some anecdotal evidence which is out there, we see that people are saying that omnichannel is, you know, is cross-channel being done well. But it's not. Omnichannel is believed to be revolutionary rather than evolutionary. Uh, in terms of existing thinking. Omnichannel is about true continuity of the experience of the customer, customer experience. It extends beyond a single brand universe. Ultimately, if we're talking about the purest form of omnichannel, a person searches online for a pair of shoes, but when they go to buy those shoes in a store, they have to start their search all over again because the stores and their online experience are not connected, and they may be two different types of brands. That would be the purest form of omnichannel. So what we're talking about with Omnichannel is that we have to allow the customers to own the experience, the data, and give them the ability to use it to guide creation and a context for developing every future experience that they might have with that brand. Now, I'm supposing all of this and I'm suggesting explaining all of this because I'd like to also bring it back to the concept of budget and how we're actually measuring things. We are pushing forward with a very ambitious concept in terms of Amelie Channel and most definitely one which would drive greater customer experience and customer engagement. But ultimately, how are we measuring that and how do we plan on measuring that? Because Omni Channel is a very wide space with multiple touch points and multiple areas of influencing in terms of customer experience. And we will not be able to measure Omni Channel and we will not be able to embrace Omni Channel if we believe and if the budget constraint is there in terms of the reasons why the, the company isn't supporting uh, the digital customer strategy. So, the Digital Leaders Summit, which is on the 8th of October 2015, what we will be achieving. We will be developing an environment for business leaders to share experience and advice on how to connect the CEO and your digital customer strategy. We will be introducing people who will be talking. We'll also have loads of case studies and people will be explaining how they have done it and others explaining the challenges that they have. It is creating a forum where people can talk together. And another reason why this is uh, per pertinent right now is that from a recent Accenture piece on digital, where they interviewed 500 C-level executives, they found that the most important enabler to growth was actually personal networks and relationships and not digital. Digital came second. So personal networks and relationships is really very much what the Digital Leaders Summit is all about. So as I said, we're also going to be talking about case studies of how to gain buy-in from the CEO. We're going to be looking at best practice industry-led examples and wider measurements that are being employed for evaluating purposes. This holistic 360-degree view in terms of measuring the impact of an investment into the digital customer strategy. And then building scalable data ecosystems in terms of big data and the challenges that they are posing. And it's about quality, not the, the quantity of data. And these need to be flexible and durable because we're talking about privacy and security. These are the big issues which are now coming up. And how can we build now to make sure that we're in a position three, five years from now where the regulatory environment may change in terms of privacy and data, that we have anticipated those changes and so that we're in a in the right place. So, global reviews and how we have been approaching this and how we have been working with clients in terms of bridging this gap and helping to interpret the digital customer strategy, I wanted to take you through some of the examples of things that we're doing right now with clients in terms of helping deliver on the digital customer strategy. For those who haven't seen the screen in front of you before, this is the end-to-end -end funnel, the Global Reviews Proprietary Customer Journey Funnel. And this is the funnel that we use in terms of measuring the pathway as the consumers move along their journey, the pathway to purchase. At the beginning, we've got the discover phase, which is how attractive you are, which is essentially from the beginning of research for an in-market consumer, someone who's looking to buy a product within the next next 90 days, right up to the point of they have visited your homepage. The discover into consider is really the point at which they have visited your homepage and how your digital marketing strategy connects with your sales strategy in terms of your actual website. The consider and the act phase then is into the actual performance of your website in terms of how easy is it for customers to buy from you. I'm going to show you a couple of examples from these three 
uh, phases, discover, consider and act and uh, just a taster of the different types of examples from different types of industries with different clients of how we can look at measuring uh, digital um, customer strategies and how we can measure performance. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the concept of attribution and essentially the concept of attribution is that any uh, anything which happens in the future, any uh, occurrence essentially has stimuli which cause that occurrence to happen. So let's say, for example, we wanted to drive advertising. We want uh, we want to establish how people ended up buying from us. So what are the different stimulus would actually drive a person to buy from us? What are the attributes, the different types of levers which actually push that person to buy from us? Was it a recommendation? Was it a TV ad that they saw? Was it a radio ad? Was it that they're actually currently a customer and they were just renewing? What are the different levers that are working for us in terms of attribution? And so in the digital marketing effectiveness program, which is at the discover phase that I talked about earlier on, one of the things that we do is we bring people in to a session online. We ask them unprompted uh, what brands they can recall in a particular industry. All of these people are in market looking to buy a product in that industry in the next 90 days. We then ask them to go off online and to research a product within that particular industry. To give you an example, as we have on screen, this may be for mortgages in the Irish banking market and so we record everything that they're doing while they're off researching a provider we uh, record all of the uh, keywords which are entered into the search term, the clicks, uh, the different links where they visit, how long they spend on each site, what they looked at, what they clicked on, and uh, we're obviously picking up the gender, demographics, and all of the various different things which helps us to profile who these people are as well as who they're currently a customer with or if they're brand new to the market as well. The shortlisted, they come back in from having completed this research task and we ask them to now to choose a shortlist of brands like a repertoire having done the task that they have completed and then finally at the preferred stage they're asked to choose one brand. So the one message though, the real message that I'm trying to get across with regards to what's on screen in front of us is that when we bring them in at the recall stage we ask them, okay, thinking of mortgage uh, products, who can you think of in the market that provides mortgage products? And so we're getting that top of mind perception based recall of different providers that are out there. We ask them at this stage to give us initial preference. This is before they do any type of educational research and then at the very, very end we're picking up the final preference. So what we're doing is we're establishing what is it that marketing is actually driving before they're going off and doing formal research in terms of looking for a product. As they move through visited, we're looking at the journey taken and if we say that shortlisted is essentially the efforts of all marketing, so we want to get on a shortlist. If we're not on a shortlist, we're not going to get to the final preference. So say Sales is actually not the point that we want to measure from attribution. Shortlist is actually where we want to measure attribution because we want to know what, do we even get onto the shortlist and what is it that drives us there. And with the different funnels that we have on screen in front of you, you can see that some are driving their shortlisting potentially through their visit and the journey taken than they are actually through their presence in the market before the customer actually starts looking for a mortgage provider at all, which is the reason why, for example, KBC's funnel is very different to AIB's funnel. AIB is very well known in the market, whereas KBC is having more of an impact at the visited stage in terms of the journey rather than actually the top of mind stage in terms of the recall. So what we're doing is we're understanding what is it that's driving people to actually shortlist one brand? Is it above the line advertising? Is it visited? Now, some of this is claimed behavior, some of this is actual behavior, but if we look at the shortlist stage and we ask people why did you shortlist a particular provider and on screen I've got three different types of insurance products from the UK, we can start to see what is it that actually drives shortlisting. Is it advertising? Is it a previous relationship? Is it something that happened on the actual customer journey? And then if we do have advertising as a reason, we also can drill further down into that to find out what was the actual advertising. Was it TV? Was it social media? Was it radio? Was it newspaper? Or was it print? So this is measuring attribution. So what we're talking about here is the understanding and being able to measure attribution is an incredibly important element in terms of the digital customer strategy because once we are able to measure our attribution and the success of our efforts 
in terms of our strategy, we're able to tweak and improve that. And those are the type of things that we can go back to the CEO and we can show, well, look, I put an extra 5% into this, it will drive with this particular market in this kind of way, rather than just looking at the sales figures and what actually uh, drove them there. Another example then is to look at customer experience. This comes from the other program that uh, comes through the consider and the act phase. And so on screen in front of you, we have a completely different program, completely different methodology, which I won't get into too much detail about. But the idea here is that people complete tasks as they're going through a website, a particular brand's website. And so we would recruit in-market consumers again to conduct tasks on a particular brand's website. We use a quantitative and qualitative methodology. And in the example on screen in front of you, we had uh, users conducting uh, research are completing five tasks on each of the brand websites that you have on screen, Nationwide, Barclays, HSBC, and Lloyds. And so what we were doing is prior to task, we asked them, okay, what's the propensity to open a bank account? And then at the very end of completing five tasks, we asked them, okay, now what is your propensity to open bank accounts? If we run that against a metric, which is well known to many of you, the customer effort score, and the lower or closer to zero the score, the better, we can see that there is a correlation between customer effort score and the propensity of somebody to take out uh, a con an account with the particular brand on screen based on how difficult it is or their experience of having used that website. So this is a key score. So what we're basically showing here is that experience does directly correlate with propensity to purchase. And that's a very important score in terms of being able to measure the return on the digital strategy and also the actual customer experience in terms of digital. Moving on, another example comes from the same program. We look at multiple different touch points and multiple different types of metrics. We weight them in terms of how important they are at each individual step of the journey. And then we look at your performance or each individual brand's performance. So this is from a particular brand. I won't name the brand, but we can see from this particular brand, the areas in the bottom right-hand corner is a high weighting of importance in terms of the customer journey and what that feature is supposed to deliver and then a low performance in terms of the brand. And so immediately, this is where they need to be focusing in terms of improving the customer journey, improving the customer experience, and driving conversion rates. Moving into another area, linking attribution to customer experience and bringing them together. So we said shortlist. We understand what is it that's actually driving shortlist. But how does the shortlist then link up with that person going on and completing the rest of their journey as they move past the marketing strategy into the actual sales implementation from the website? How well do, do, do these <coughs> excuse me, two different elements align? We know that we could have many, many people visiting a website, and if we measured conversion ratios on the amount of people who actually visited a website, it is better to have people who are of a greater quality visiting our website than having a huge amount of people. So essentially, there's a strategy there in terms of who are the people that we actually want to convert. And if you look at those who are shortlisting you, and then moving on to actually shop on your website, we can establish how much of the marketing strategy is actually driving it, how much of the website is actually driving it, and whether there are any issues with the website with particular target audiences and driving them through to actually finish and buy from you. How important is the recommendation and how do we get people to talk about you with your friends? Can we build predictive models? Absolutely we can, but the idea is that we're looking at financial calculators against conversion ratios from shortlisted through to the actual website. We're looking at calculators in terms of attribution and building out predictive models in terms of helping us to allocate the weight of our budget in terms of SEO, digital uh, display advertising, or VOD. Again, talking about this customer experience piece that I brought up earlier on and the fact that we're able to look at the different journeys and those different journeys will affect people, it's very important to be able to establish who those different people are. And so I'm giving you an example of the different types of things that we can pull out and that we need to understand and measure in terms of the customer journey within the digital uh, strategy. So we can see the proportion of people who use a search engine against aggregator, against brand website, and that will 
change dependent on who they're currently a customer with or on their level of conservatism. So the idea being, are they with one of the bigger brands and are they there because of trust and they're there because they're in the banking sector and, and trust and within the banking sector is one of the most important to, things to them. Or are they there because they're a promiscuous shopper in the banking sector, trust doesn't mean much to them and they're actually all about rates. How are Import or how valuable are each of these different target audiences and ultimately if you want to capture them what do you need to say about yourself in order to get them to buy from you. We can look at the actual journeys and the multiple pathways that they've taken and we can also look at the individual links and websites that they've gone on to visit. Pulling this against a portrait picture of who the person or the group is is very very important. So looking again at the customer journey at a much more diagnostic level, we're looking at the search terms that they may use. They may be generic search terms. They may be comparative search terms. And when they use those different, those different search terms, what do they actually click on when they come to a search engine? So for example, are they clicking on the ads on the right-hand side? Are they clicking on the, the organic search results that come in above the fold? And are people searching by... Um, comparative terms as in money supermarket as in a comparative brand and how is that affecting things in terms of whether they're converting over to brands because people are most definitely searching by brand and then going to a comparative website so some examples in terms of the actual customer journey another example is it's really important for us to be able to understand the channels as we more and more move towards the idea of from call center to online conversion because of the ratios of economy of scale and return on investment of being able to get people to complete the journey and the quotation and the purchase themselves online. Businesses are becoming more and more aggressive in terms of moving resources from the actual telephone call centers into online. But if we do that, how do we move that across? What's the impact that it's going to have on the business? Who are the people it's going to actually impact the most? It's really important to be able to understand where they're getting their price information where customers want to go when it actually comes to the point of I'm now at the shortlisted and I would like to find out more information or I'm now at the final preferred and I'd like to find out more information. How should we allocate our resources and to whom and in what way because different groups want different types of messaging and we need to make sure that we're facilitating the right groups and that we, we don't lose customers uh, who we really want to hold on to. So understanding how to support the channels is key. And then another element is the areas of building customer value is our own customers, our retained customers, and measuring churn and understanding where the lost opportunities are. So the idea being we have shortlisted, but they didn't choose us at the final preference. I had three brands that I shortlisted, but I only chose one. Why did I not choose the other two brands? That's a really important message. Or what about the message I'm currently with AIB, for example, who's a bank in the Republic of Ireland, and why, if I'm with AIB now, did I choose a different bank like KBC for my mortgage provider? What is it that KBC are offering? How am I maturing as an actual customer? How is the economy or how is the actual business environment evolving? So it's actually changing how I'm making my decisions and affecting my customer behavior. So for example, on screen we have a bar chart which shows those who shortlisted AIB but didn't choose them. We have the reasons for the final preference. Then we have those who are currently with AIB but ultimately choose a different provider or choose AIB. So in this case, 47% of those who are currently with AIB chooses them at the final preference, which means that they're losing the majority actually when it comes to their lost opportunity. And then the reasons why those who are choosing AIB and who are current customers of AIB, the reasons why they chose them. And this gives us an, an, an ability to be able to see, is it a relationship to the brand or is it a product relationship? What is it that's driving this? What are we relying on in terms of the value that we are giving to the customer? And is that a value which can be eroded easily by our competitors? So. We want to talk about all of this stuff and more, industry examples, when we come to the Digital Leaders Summit in October. The key message is that the CEO needs you. We know that. The reasons why is that there is now more addressable media opportunities than ever and hyper-targeting opportunities in terms of customer as we look at Omnichannel. We know that digital now is disrupting industries. We have companies coming out with no legacy in a particular industry and they are changing the business model and they are changing the rules of the game. It's now possible to activate media buys in real time 
we now have bigger data at a smaller price when understanding quality that means we're starting to get data scientists working with market researchers we don't need to know how to do their job but we do need to know what is it that comes out of it and why it's valuable privacy security all of these elements are becoming hugely important as well stalking versus servicing is something that we talked about in the last digital leader summit all of these areas are going to be looked at when we come to the digital leader summit in october of this year thank you very much for coming along this morning this is a snapshot of some of the reasons why we're get the the theme that we're going with this year in terms of the digital leader summit i've given you some examples of how we're currently measuring these with our clients and i really do hope that you'll come along to the digital leader summit towards the end of this year my contact details are on screen if you have any questions please do get in touch and thank you very much for listening in